In this tutorial today, we will make these four toe ring designs. Hi guys. Well, welcome to my very first tutorial video. Wish me luck. And I'm excited to show you some toe ring designs. We're gonna just start simple because if you're gonna follow me from the beginning, I'm gonna work you up to things that are a little bit more difficult. But we're gonna make these three designs. You might need a little bit of experience doing some wire work prior to getting started for the first time, but I think this is going to give you a really good direction even if you have never made jewelry in the past. The tools that I'm going to use for this project, I have a rubber mallet. This one's been beat to heck, but it works great. And you need some flush cutters. You need some needle nose pliers. And some chain nose pliers. You need a hammer with a smooth finish on it and a steel block. You need a ring mandrel. You don't have to. You can use something like um, a mascara uh, container or something that, that you can easily wrap your ring around, but these aren't too expensive. A ring mandrel is really handy and a ruler. So. I'm going to be using some 18 gauge copper wire. The reason I'm going to use copper for my videos is so that it shows up really nicely in the video. When you're making a toe ring, when I'm making toe rings for my shop, I make them to be about a size three and a half. And for that you need two inches of wire to go all the way around the toe and maybe a little tiny bit of overlapping. But I'm gonna start out showing you how to make just a very basic ring. This can be worn, all of these designs that we're gonna to make today can be worn as knuckle rings or toe rings. But this one, you start with actually flush cutting the end of the wire if you use the tool and cut it this way, you'll see a little bevel and you don't want a bevel on the edge because that's going to be really sharp. Flush cut it and then it'll end up nice and flat. So I start by flush cutting the end of the wire and for that little loop, I'm going to start with two and a half inches of wire. Our toe ring needs to be two inches long, but we're going to make the loops on the end and we need some additional length. So I'm going to flush cut two and a half inches and then I'm going to get my needle nose pliers and make a little loop on either end. Don't close it all the way. The end of your tool here is a little bit bigger than you want your hole to be for that loop. So I make it just partial and then I'll use my needle nose pliers to close it all the way and make that hole a little smaller. Okay. Right, so now we have our toe ring wire ready. I like to wrap it around the size, between size two and three, kind of right in the middle usually. My ideal size when I'm done is a size three that can be adjustable. You take your rubber mallet and just shape it. You can hammer the heck out of your wire it is not going to damage it with your rubber mallet. You can use your rubber mallet or a rawhide mallet. I have one of those as well, but I like this size. So I'm turning with these fingers. I'm turning this ring and hammering as I go with the other hand. And I started a smaller size because by the time I'm done, it's gonna fit right where I need it to be. Anyhow, that is our basic little stacking toe ring or knuckle ring. But that's the size it needs to be. Let's start with this design. Isn't that cute? I'm gonna show you how to make that. So to make it easy for 
this video purpose, I'm going to cut a piece of wire just so I have a piece of it. I normally would just work at the end of my spool and I kind of know how much to use, but I think for showing you initially how to do this, a, a nice little piece will work great. Okay, so I'm going to take the very tip of my needle nose pliers, kind of in the middle of my wire here, and I'm going to bend it in half, keeping that loop really tiny. And I'm going to measure, I do this by eyeball now, but when you get started, I would like you to measure one centimeter. So between here and here, I want you to take it, and measure just one centimeter. If your loops are a little too big, I want you to use your needle nose pliers and cinch it to make it a little bit smaller. But we can close these up later. So I want you to go just below the loop on one end and bend it in and then just below the loop on the other end and bend it in and then bend it straight back. We're going to go on the other side and do the same thing. Just below the top of that loop we're going to go down. Just below the loop on the other end we're going to go straight down and then we're going to go straight out. Okay. Okay, this isn't exactly what we want it to look like for a finished product because if you can see here, each of those little loops are kind of pushed together. So let's take our needle nose pliers and just do that. We're going to close all of these. And sometimes it can be done by hand too. Sometimes that's easier. But depending on the hardness of your wire, you may want to use a tool. Just be careful not to damage your wire. And then these pieces need to be straight out. Okay, I'm going to use my hammer a lot when I'm making videos and showing you because I like the finished look of the hammer look. Let's look at the difference real quick before I hammer. The finished one is kind of flattened around the curves and it has kind of a reflective finish. When you hammer your wire, it's going to harden it. And this one will look okay if you don't do that to it, but I prefer this look, so this is what I'm going to do. The top of your toe ring is the bottom of where you've just hammered. When you hammer, it's going to open up those circles a little bit. Just take one of your tools and cinch them back together. You want them to be nice and tight and close. Your toe is small, so you want the design that's going to be on top of your toe to be relatively small. This is probably one of my bigger designs, but it's a popular one. It's super cute to wear. We want these the ends of these wires to go straight out, so using the flat edge of your needle nose pliers, just straighten them out. Okay. All right, so we said we wanted the toe ring to be two inches long. So I'm going to work between this, let's see, so you can see it properly, between the three and five here, I'm going to put it on the four. So your design is right in the middle of two inches, but we need extra length for those little loops on the end, so we're going to flush cut it a quarter of an inch on either side. Voila! Okay, just take your needle nose pliers and create a little tiny loop on either side. Don't complete that loop. Make it about a little bit three quarters of a way around. Because the tip of your needle nose pliers is bigger than you want this hole to be. So make it three quarters of the way around and then take your needle nose pliers and pull it in towards the loop. If you did it flat, it's gonna make a weird Oh, that didn't turn out too bad, but I always kind of pull it towards there so it makes a really tiny little loop. I made a little bit smaller one. 
and you can straighten your wire out if you need to. Okay, so if you hammered your ring down this way, you want to make sure that shiny part is on the top before you wrap it around. Again, I'm going to place it at about two and a half on the ring sizer and use my rubber mallet and just hammer it all the way around. This just makes it a nice perfect circle. This ring holder happens to have a groove that I use for other purposes. So when I hammer, I just make sure I hammer on the top where I don't hit that groove. And I'm using these fingers and turning as I'm hammering. Pressing the wires together and turning as I go to get a nice circle. And there we go. You can wear this depending on the size that you can make it. Obviously you can make it longer. Wear it as a regular ring, a knuckle ring, or a toe ring. These are so fun. The next one we're going to do is this really cute heart toe ring or knuckle ring. And I love this design. So take your 18 gauge wire, cut a piece that is probably about four inches long. And you're going to take your needle nose pliers and you're going to bend this directly in half. And it wasn't directly in half, but it's close enough. We're going to cut the ends off. And you're going to take this and you're going to cinch it together so it's tight. And then I want you to take your needle nose pliers. And we're going to make a tiny little heart. So you don't want to hold it way back here because that's going to make a really big heart. That's going to create, when you bring these wires around, we want that heart to be small. So hold it at the bottom and just take your hand fingers and pull that wire around either side. See how it's done that? I'll try to keep this thing focused. All right, so you take your tool out and you've got a nice little heart. I want you to just kind of, it's a little bit tweaked there I'm just going to take my flat nose pliers and kind of shape it so it's more flat. And I also want to get that curved effect. Let's look at the finished product here. The, end, the curves of the heart there are hammered. Okay, so while these are still down, it'll allow us a little bit more room to get our hammer in there. I do it softly. <clears throat> Being careful not to Being careful not to hit the center of that heart. If I need to, I can cinch this to make the heart even smaller. All right, now I just get my needle nose pliers and I straighten this out. All right, so we want this to be two inches long with enough room for those little loops. So I'm gonna place this in the middle of our two inch measurement. We're gonna flush cut to a quarter inch on either side. And that gives us the exact size that we need. We're gonna take our needle nose pliers and make a little loop on either end. About three quarters of the way When you're wearing this toe ring, these little loops are going behind your toe. You want them to be small. You don't want anything bulky underneath your foot. So I make the loop third of the way and then take my pliers and pull it in so I can make that loop as small as possible. Our goal here is really just so that you don't have raw ends that are going to poke you on the bottom of the foot as you're wearing your toe ring. And this makes it really nice. Have you ever worn those toe rings that, that come and they just almost just barely touch on the ends, but they're open and they pinch you as you're walking? Nobody likes that. So 
This eliminates that problem. Between the size two and three, I wrap, just kind of finger, whoops, see, I need my loops to overlap this direction. And I'm kind of at the size two, maybe two and a half, and I'm pressing and I'm turning with this hand. Okay, it is as simple as that, you guys. And you have a beautiful heart little toe ring. I love it. This is great as a stacking ring. You can wear it with your other one that you made that's just a plain one. You can wear it on two different toes or a couple different fingers. Okay, we're gonna make our last one, which is this cool design. And for this one, you need five and a half inches of wire. So we're gonna use the whole amount. So we're gonna make sure we flush cut this end because I don't want anything sharp. So I just trim off a little piece and it makes it nice and flat. And you're going to measure five and a half inches of wire and flush cut the other side. You have to turn your, your cutters so that they flush cut that other end and make it nice and flat. If your wire is kind of all bendy like this, instead of trying to use your fingers and straighten it out, which you can do, it just might take longer and I don't like the way it feels on my fingertips. I take it on my steel block and I hammer, hammer, hammer as I'm turning with this other hand. And as I'm turning and hammering, it straightens it out very nicely. Okay, that did a pretty good job. Okay, I want you to take your wire and at about two and three quarter inches, one, two, two and three quarters, I want you to make a bend. And we can do that about midway up on the tool because we want this to be a nice little loop. And we're bending this. All right, I'm gonna try to keep this centered on the camera. Okay, it needs to be offset because you have one side that is longer with those little loops than the other. So on the shorter end, you're gonna just do a nice little turn in, make a little loop. And then you're gonna do the same thing here until it, that loop kind of comes flush with the other one. So you're just gonna turn that wire And I want those loops to say small. Sometimes I have to use my, my needle nose pliers and I always hold it flat. If you were trying to grab it like this, you could put creases in your wire. If you hold it flat and then kind of turn in, it works really nice. And I want these to be right on top of each other. So I might have to kind of hold my, my wire with the end there the needle nose pliers. Anyway, I kind of flatten this out with my with my rubber mallet. But same thing. So if you notice this finished product, I have hammered on the curves of the loops and the curve on the end here. So we're going to hammer this end and these curves. So with it, Make sure you have a hammer that's nice and smooth. I didn't buy a jewelry hammer, I just went and found a hammer that was nice and smooth and I've been using this for years. You know, I'm self-taught, so I just do things my own way. I do what works for me and I'm gonna share with you with what I do. So you're just gonna take this and hand wrap it around your mandrel. And again, I'm just hammering it between size two and three. So I want to show you something. So this is going to be the perfect size for a toe ring, but a lot of times my customers might say, well, I want a size four. Well, let's see what that looks like. 
you don't really have to cut a different length of wire to make a size 4. If I pull it up to a size 4, that hardly looks any different. So I might just hammer it if they tell me they need a size 4 to that size, just so when it arrives to them, it comes at a perfect size. But obviously, if you need it to be a three and a half, it's a very small difference in size. And that's all you have to do. But now you have three beautiful rings that you can wear and share and give as gifts. You have this little one as a stacking ring. You have your heart. And you can, you're going to come up with ideas from there. Once you know the length and once you know how to make the toe ring size, you're going to come up with ideas to make all kinds of stuff. Well, I hope you follow me on my next video. I have three new toe ring designs that I'm going to show you that are a little bit more advanced and give you some more ideas. But please subscribe. That way you'll get notifications when a new video is available and share these. I would love to share these designs with as many of you who would love to learn with me. We'll see you next time.